Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to make some stuffed waffles. When I was preparing to record this video, the plan was originally just to do a review of the Keto Bakes Pancake and Waffle Mix, but I figured I can give you 400% more. So in addition to the pancake mix, I will also be trying out the Dash Everyday Griddle, the Presto Stuffler Stuffed Waffle Maker, the Chalk Zero Strawberry Jam, and the Walden Farms Calorie Free Maple and Bacon Syrup. Before we start making any pancakes or waffles or stuffed waffles, let's talk about ingredients. First with the pancake mix. For every product that I've reviewed so far from Keto Bakes, I have found the ingredients to be very, very clean. In this, we have non-GMO almond flour, organic coconut flour, grass-fed collagen type 1 and 3, non-GMO oat fiber, aluminum-free baking powder, natural butter flavor, xanthan gum, baking soda, and Himalayan mineral salt. In terms of serving size, it says there are 12 servings per container. I don't know what that works out to in terms of final pancakes or waffles or anything like that. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I think, to give the nutritional information on this. It says you're looking at two grams of net carbs per serving, whatever, whatever that winds up being, six grams total. But uh, I guess we're going to see what a serving size looks like once we start making them. For the strawberry jam, we'll be using this in our stuffed waffle. You're looking at 11 grams of total carbohydrates per tablespoon. 10 of those are dietary fiber. So if you're doing total grams, probably not your thing. In terms of ingredients, soluble corn fiber, fructo oligosaccharides, winter melon water, strawberries, glycerin, pectin, chia seeds, monk fruit extract, natural strawberry flavor, sodium citrate, ascorbic acid, potassium sorbate, that's it. So one of the things, and I mention this every time I do a chalk zero review, soluble corn fiber or soluble vegetable fiber, for some people that does cause a glucose spike. It doesn't for me, but if you find that it does for you, probably want to avoid this product. For the Walden Farms syrup, serving size is one quarter cup, Total carbs, one gram. Ingredients, now if you are the ingredient police, this is gonna be not something you approve of. We have water, natural and artificial flavors, cellulose gum, salt, sodium benzoate, and potassium sorbate to preserve freshness, sucralose, sodium bisulfate, lactic acid, caramel color, modified gum acacia, yeast extract, xanthan gum, guar gum, carob gum. So in terms of really clean keto, this is probably not but what the heck, we're already eating pancakes. A little bit of this isn't gonna kill me, I hope. So now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna dramatically remove my glasses and make some pancakes and waffles. We start with six large eggs, one quarter cup avocado oil or MCT oil. I'm gonna use MCT oil. One half cup heavy whipping cream. And three quarters cup water. Then we'll blend this for 10 to 20 seconds. As I was blending that, I thought to myself, this batter is really not very thick. Forgot to add the mix. So we'll add the mix now. and blend it for real this time. Okay, that looks more like batter. So I'm gonna set this aside for five minutes and let it thicken up while I start preheating my griddle. According to the internet, the proper temperature to set a griddle for pancakes is 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you look at the instruction manual would put us somewhere between four and five on our dial. Eh, that looks pretty close. It's been three minutes. We're not preheated yet, but I can feel a ton of heat coming off of this thing. All right, moving around 438. 
kind of checking for uniformity of temperature. Oh, wow, that's a hot spot right there. 470, 460. Yeah, this thing is running hot. So I turned the temperature back down to a 2. It's been at 2 for about 3 minutes, and... Boy, you can still see there's a real, real problem with uniformity of temperature on this. Yikes. Whoa. What did I see there? Look at that. Even at 2, down in this corner here, we're at almost 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm not sure if I just have a bad thermostat or something on my dash griddle. There's definitely, definitely problems with heat uniformity regardless. I'm going to do the best I can to try and make some pancakes, but if the pancakes don't turn out exactly right in terms of how well they cook, I'm probably going to have to put this one on the dash griddle. Now, if I were trying to make a bunch of even pancakes, I'd probably just use an ice cream scoop, but this is just for a quick sample here, so I'm going to pour directly from my blender bowl. I'll make a couple of them, and we'll do three. I've always found that the time to flip pancakes is once the edges are dry and I start seeing bubbles form that pop that don't then fill back up with batter. We're not quite there yet. I'm not really getting any bubbles, but the edges do look dry enough that I think I'm going to give these a flip. Probably could have let it go just a smidge longer. These are some puffy pancakes. And you can see here's a little example of the uneven heat distribution on this griddle. Okay, let's get these off to a plate. Oops. Put on a little butter. Smear this butter around to get it melted. And then I'm going to take a bite without any syrup. These are light and very, very buttery. I'm going to try and get some without quite so much extra butter. These are tasty. I mean, these are really, really good. I think they're missing a little bit of chew, though. You know, you don't have real flour, so you're not getting that slightly glutinous chew to it. I think maybe instead of collagen, if they use some gelatin, perhaps, in the recipe, you might get a little bit more of that chew. But now I'm going to try out some of the Walden Farms syrup. I don't think I've ever had any Walden Farms syrup. I've had some of their um, salad dressing, I think it was, and wasn't real knocked out. But we'll see how this works. Just give it a little drizzle there. The pancakes are breaking apart a little bit when I try and stab them. Again, I wonder if perhaps a little bit of gelatin would help them hold together. That's some pretty tasty syrup. The bacon flavor, it's not real strong. It's kind of like, you know, there was just a little bit of bacon fat that maybe merged with some of the syrup. It's pretty good. I have to admit, I've never been a really big pancake fan. I think perhaps because they always feel just so heavy once they're in my stomach. I'm not getting that from this. I, I'm really digging these pancakes. I'm gonna have this last bite and then we're going to see how this works in a Dash Mini Waffle Maker. Our Dash Mini is preheated. I'm going to do my best to sort of eyeball this and not overflow. That feels like it's going to be about right. It's been about four minutes. And there is just a whisper of steam coming out. That's usually my cue. I think I did a pretty good job here sizing this waffle out. We'll pop this onto our plate. As I'm spreading the butter here, I am finding this to be a little bit soft. I've done a little bit of studying and I found that for waffles, there's a couple of little things that you do 
to, to make them a little bit more stiff, including decreasing the water and I think increasing the baking powder. But trying to use a one-size-fits-all batter, I think you get slightly soft waffles. Again, I'll take the first bite without any syrup. The flavor is spectacular. Texturally, though, I've got a couple of issues. First off, like I said, when you're doing a waffle, I like it to be a little bit more firm, almost a little bit crisp on the outside. And I don't think it's a matter of cooking time with this. I think it's a matter of the recipe. And I'm not sure what tweaks exactly would need to be made in order to get it there. So come to think of it, that's my only issue with these. I'm gonna put a little syrup on. And just a little drizzle. This is really yummy. I just need to play around with the recipe, I think, a little bit to see if I can get that waffle texture to be as good as the flavor. And now for the final part of the video, we're gonna try out the Stuffler. Okay, for the Stuffler, it says we're supposed to add about up to the halfway mark. Our batter's getting pretty thick here. I'm give this a little jiggle to see if I can get the batter to even out. And I'm going to do a dollop of jam in each one of these quadrants. And a little chunk of cream cheese. Might have gone a little bit large on the cream cheese. And we'll fill this up the rest of the way. Another little jiggle here. Close it up and flip it over. Now we let it cook for eight minutes. It's been eight minutes. All right, you can see, looks like a little bit of that strawberry jam popped through, but overall appears done. I'm gonna flip it over to the other side, just since I'm right-handed. It should be easier for me to extract this. Kinda heavy. That's pretty slick. All right, let's cut into it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I think that's the thumbnail photo right there. This is really steaming hot, but I don't know that I can wait a lot longer before I taste it. That is pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to go wrong, in my opinion, with cream cheese and strawberries. Wow. Wow. This Stuffler thing is pretty slick. I mean, everything stayed in its compartment. Uh, it's, it's everything you would hope for in a stuffed waffle. And what I love about this mix is Unlike a lot of the keto pancakes and pancake mixes that I've tried, there's no grittiness. You know, oftentimes that almond flour can make them really gritty or the coconut flour can make them overly dry. Apparently these guys have found the right ratio of ingredients though, because I get none of that in this. This is just some good pancake and waffle mix right here. So in summary, now I am three for four in terms of Keto Bakes products. Wasn't a big fan of their cinnamon rolls, but their burger buns, their pizza crust, and now this, I can give a thumbs up to. As for the Dash Griddle, I'm gonna say no on that. Mine absolutely had thermostat issues, and I think just as a design flaw, it's got some heating element issues. Now, if you have one and have had better experiences with it, please let me know, but I'm gonna say probably that's not the griddle you're looking for. I also really liked both that strawberry jam and the syrup. Now, I will say that both of them have ingredients that may be upsetting to some people, either in terms of their blood glucose or just the general ingredients. But that's your call. If you don't like those products, if you don't like those ingredients, don't buy them. The Stuffler, however, I think this could be a lot of fun. I think making some savory waffles as well, like if you could use some sort of a cornbread type of a mix. In fact, I do have a recipe for that, which I'll link to up there. And then maybe a fill it with some cheddar and some jalapenos, maybe a little bit of chorizo or something. 
yeah, my mind is spinning right now with some ideas for the Stuffler. So I will link to all the products that I use down in the description below, along with coupon codes if I have them for any of the products. If you found this video helpful, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap the subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what memberships and perks are all about. Thanks for watching.